And welcome, you're watching News 9 with me, Deepak. And first up, Malaysia Airlines has clarified that flight MH17, which crashed in Ukraine on Thursday night, was carrying 298 people. The plane comprised of 283 passengers and 15 crew members. Three of the passengers were infants. The plane was shot down over Ukraine by a surface-to-air missile, but it was unclear who fired the weapon. Self-proclaimed separatist leader arrived at Malaysia Airlines crash site. Ukrainian security services claimed to have intercepted two phone conversations in which pro-Russian separatists discuss having just shot down a civilian plane. A transcript of the phone intercept was made shortly after the MH17 was shot down. Now the participants are reportedly a pro-Russian rebel a Russian minister and another Russian intelligence officer. So quite a shocker there, 298 people being claimed with this flight coming down on Russian soil. This was the flight, the Malaysian flight carrying 283 passengers and 15 crew members. Now this is the Malaysian airline MH17 as clarified by the Malaysian authorities, it crashed in Ukraine on Thursday night, just carrying 298 people. Now, the plane, which comprised of 283 passengers and 15 crew members, none of them have survived this horrifying crash. The visuals on your screen, they're trying to douse the fire, but to no avail. This was MH17, one of the most devastating crashes ever known. Now, the plane was shot down over the Ukraine over the Ukraine border by a surface-to-air missile, but it was unclear who fired the weapon. Now, self-proclaimed separatist leader arrived at the Malaysia Airlines crash site. Now, Ukrainian security services claimed to have intercepted two phone conversations in which pro-Russian separatists discuss having just shot down a civilian plane. Now, these are the passports of some of the victims of this horrifying plane crash. The remaining debris of this aircraft that you see on your screens. This is Yanakivo in Ukraine. That's the exact location of the crash site. As you see, this is some exclusive footage of the debris of the plane. Now, the participants are reportedly a pro-Russian rebel, a Russian minister, and another Russian intelligence officer. As you see, they're trying their best to douse the fire so that they could reclaim the remaining parts of whatever remains from this debris. Of course, that will only serve for investigations and nothing more because all the 298 people on board, including the 15... Have to be something more than just like a, a shoulder a fire weapon. Um, uh, Miles O'Brien, how difficult is it uh, to tell whether or not an aircraft flying it 32, 33,000 feet is in fact a, a military aircraft or a civilian aircraft. Whoever shot this down, my understanding is it's very possible they could have thought they were shooting down a military aircraft, correct? Yeah, but if it walks like a duck, it usually is a duck. And this was a, 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 the profile of a commercial airliner, 33,000 feet level on a corridor where commercial airliners would be. Now, Admittedly, this aircraft was flying uh, a little more to the north than it did in previous days because of some weather. But basically, military aircraft have an enhanced transponder capability called identification friend or foe. But really, that's a misnomer. It's identification friend and then all others. Mm -hmm. And this would fall in the category of all others. So then it's up to the crew to look at that blip on the radar and say, does this look like something that has hostile intent? And if you have a crew that is inexperienced or trigger happy or aggressive, they might make a decision to shoot first and ask questions later. Yeah. Uh, Bob, do you, do you agree with that? I mean, again, because Miles did raise the possibility that, you know, you shoot first, you ask questions later. Uh, I'm just trying to think of why, from a strategic standpoint, separatists, anybody involved in this theater of conflict would, would intentionally shoot down a civilian aircraft. And from a strategic standpoint, I don't really see an argument for anybody doing this intentionally, do you? You know, on the face of it, no, it makes no sense to us, but you have to look at the Russians, for instance, are trying to provoke a, a true 
full-out war in the eastern Ukraine. They don't intend to give it up. And what disturbs me right now is the Russian media has been saying that this was an attempt on Putin, which, you know, if, if the Russians truly believe that, this is a reason to go to war, to actually send troops into the eastern Ukraine. Ukraine. Yeah. As I've been saying from the very beginning, Putin will not give that area up. He continues to arm the, the dissidents. And uh, he, I don't know what he's capable of. Did it, was, was this a Russian attack? We simply don't know. And I don't think we're ever going to find out for sure. It's just, you know, we don't have enough intelligence agents on the ground. And the people who really know what happened are the dissidents or the Russian military. I uh, appreciate all of you uh, being with us. Uh, more ahead on the context. Months of violence in Ukraine. New American sanctions on Russia. We'll take a look at what's behind the conflict in Ukraine and talk more about how it bears on today's tragedy. We're live all the way at the 10 o'clock hour tonight. So quite shocking there. That is some of the international media going on to say that the flight moved towards the north than usual. So that was one of the reasons of suspicions. First clue that uh, the crew members on board would have got that usually the plane which does not head towards the north, it moved unusually north than usual. Now they al already had a single signal uh, saying either a friend or a foe. This was when probably the missiles were arriving towards the flight. So they have not detected this. The crew members, probably uh, inexperienced crew members, Fail, failing to detect the missile which was incoming. Now the radar of course showed the missile which was moving towards the plane. The inexperienced crew members might have not taken it seriously. Now of course this was a surface to air missile but it was unclear who actually fired the weapon. Now self-proclaimed separatist leaders arrived at Malaysia Airlines crash site the U Ukrainian security services claim to have intercepted two phone conversations in which pro-Russian separatists discuss having shot down a civilian plane. Now, this might be at the back of Russia trying to provoke a war. It clearly wants to make its authority felt at the U eastern Ukrainian border. They do not want to let go of that territory. This, this time and again has the intent of it has been shown. Now, this might be one of the reasons why, but clearly... 298 people being shot down in midair comes as quite a shocker. Now, a transcript of the phone intercept was made shortly after the MH was shot down. The participants are reportedly a pro-Russian rebel, a Russian minister and another Russian intelligence officer. So, everybody from Russia involved in this particular scene where 298 people, 298 people, mind you, were shot down were on board this ill-fated Ill plane. Now, this probably comes as a strategic attack on the Malaysian flight. Now, of course, Russia is all, uh, trying to make sure its grasp on Ukraine remains strong. So this might be one of the reasons why now pro-separatists, pro-Russian separatists are allegedly behind this attack. Now, clarity on this issue is still yet to be known. Now, we should know that this is not the first such incident. Now, April 20th, 1978, two Soviet fighter jets intercepted Korean air flight 902 near Mursmansk after it was veered off course. This was not the only one, another Korean air flight was brought down by the USSR on 1st September 1983. On November 6, 1987, during the Civil War, an Air Mal Malawi scheduled passenger flight was shot down en route from Blantyre to Liguong. Now, on July 3rd, 1988, the U.S. warship USS Winston is fired a surface-to-air missile to shoot down Iran Air Flight 655 traveling from Bandar Abbas in Iran to Dubai. Now, this had 290 passengers. Apart from this, Ukrainian military shot down a Russian passenger jet containing 78 people in on 4th October 2001. So, Ukraine and Russia and Russia known to atta um, attack some of these planes is not the first time. We've had instances like this in the past, but not clear with the United Nations taking a stand, making it clear as to certain regulations that need to be followed by countries. 
how pro-Russian separators have gone and managed to fire a surface air missile to actually bring down the Malaysian Airline 17 to actually kill 298 people. So quite a shocker. Now there, there were 285 people along with 15 crew members as well on board this particular flight. Now the Malaysian Prime Minister has launched an immediate probe into the matter as well. He will be uh, looking in to the aspects of why and what went wrong and how the Malaysian Airline 17, the MH17, crashed in Ukraine on Thursday night. One of the most, one of the biggest stories we are tracking today. This is the Malaysian Airlines MH17 being shot down in Ukrainian soil. Now the doubts are being raised that pro-Russian separatists are behind the attack.